Well, good morning, everybody. It is a May 28th, Friday. Hope you are doing well. Uh, hope you have uh, experienced God throughout the course of this week. Maybe you have been inspired to look specifically for God uh, in in the course of your day, uh, course of your days, and maybe you've been surprised by how God has showed up. Maybe God has been doing something in your life or in the neighborhood around you or in the world that you, that you weren't that you weren't really aware of uh, until you took a moment to actually intentionally sit back and look for the presence of God. That's one of the habits we're we're trying to uh, foster by doing these daily times of prayer, these daily times of, of scripture reading, is to set aside just a little bit of time to intentionally look for the movement of God in our lives. And so uh, we get a chance to do that to uh, today to look at one of the Psalms. We are looking at Psalm 8. Uh, again, we are reading from the Message Contemporary Translation. Um, and so the wording may be a little surprising to us, and that's sort of the point. It's, it's designed to sort of wake us up into the reality of what the author is trying to say uh, in these writings. Uh, there's also a, a bit of an orientation footnote to Psalm 8, and I'd like to read that, uh, and then we will take a moment of quiet, and then we'll read Psalm 8 together. So Peterson writes this about Psalm 8. He says, prayer is an orienting act. We, be, we begin to discover who we are when we realize where we are. Disorientation is a terrible experience. If we can't locate our place, we're left in confusion and anxiety. We're also in danger, for we're apt to act desperately with disastrous consequences. If, for example, we're alongside a cliff and don't know it, we may lose our footing and take a cat catastrophic fall. While praying Psalm 8, we find out where we are and some important aspects of who we are. That's how we regain our balance and reestablish our footing. So let's take a moment to settle our hearts and then I will read Psalm 8 for us. Psalm 8, God, brilliant Lord, yours is a household name. Nursing infants gurgle choruses about you. Toddlers shout the songs that drown out enemy talk and silence atheist babble. I look up at your macro skies, dark and enormous, your handmade sky jewelry, moon and stars mounted in their settings. <clears throat> Then I look at my micro self and wonder, why do you bother with us? Why take a second look our way? Yet we've so narrowly missed being gods bright with Eden's dawn light. You put us in charge of your handcrafted world, repeated to us your Genesis charge, made us lords of sheep and cattle, even animals out in the wild, birds flying and fish swimming, whales singing in the ocean deeps. God, brilliant Lord, your name echoes around the world. This is one of the more um, well-known psalms, I suppose. The psalm itself is a, is a psalm of praise to God, um, and, and, and it's done in the way of understanding creation. You know, we, we've talked about it a little bit in the book of Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth, the, the sun and the moon, the day and the night, the stars and the, and, and the, and, and the stars and the heavens. And, um, and at the very end, God created humanity. And we talked about how, or we have in past talked about how in humanity, God puts his, his, his fingerprint on creation. It's almost like God's signing, um, his work of art, almost like an artist would sign a painting after, after she finishes it, and and so that's what that's what we are. That's what humanity is: the crown of creation, the the image of the Creator in the creation itself. Um, and, and so this psalm itself, it talks about looking at the macro things, the the the, the heavens, the earth, the 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 things that we sit back and wonder at. 
one of my kids yesterday said to me, Dad, do you know that the sun is actually one of the smallest stars that exists? And, and, and she said that in the sense of like, wow, there is, there, is, there is this awesomeness in the truest sense of the word, this awesomeness about creation, about what God has done. Um, in creation, and, and we can s we can look at that and ponder that, and and sometimes feel very insignificant, right? We feel so tiny compared to the planet Jupiter, um, and and yet and yet God still calls humanity more important, or or, or deeper, or or more significant to creation. The love that God has for humanity. Um, surpasses those things and and this prayer and we think it's david again um is left in awe and, and this humble gratefulness that the lord could be so magnificent so beyond us and yet still care so deeply for us um, that gives us so much meaning so much purpose so much uh significance really uh, as to who we are, why we live, what our, what our meaning in existence is all about. So ponder that today. Remember that you are the crown of creation, that you, along with all humanity, are eternally significant. Um, that there's nothing that God wouldn't and actually hasn't already done um, that we would be redeemed people, people experiencing the life of salvation, and redemption, the full of fullness of life. Let's uh, take some time to pray for the day ahead. Please join me. Lord, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We pray that. We recognize that. We recognize how awesome you are, how significant you are, how big you are. Magnificent. And Lord, we are, we are people. We are humans. We are this small finite thing that that exists and, and, and we can look at ourselves and relative you know relative to the to the other miracles of the creation and feel both insignificant but then reframed we recognize how significant you actually say we are Lord help us to remember that when we interact with those around us today especially when we are in the midst of people who, um, who we may not connect with, who we may not normally feel comfortable around, who we might have prejudices against in one way or another. Lord, help us to look so much more deeply the people around us, that we would have a better sense of what you say is true about, about them and us. And let us live in ways that reflect that, in our generosity, in our hospitality, in our priorities, in our daily living. Lord, help us to, to know those truths about what you say is reality. Lord, today we want to pray for whatever's on our heart. There are things that we come to, people with health issues, people with relationship issues, people who are lonely, feeling abandoned, feeling the weight of, the, of this long, long pandemic, Lord. We want to pray for them and for us as well. And so, friends, let's uh, lift up our prayers. Whatever's on your heart, Lord, hear our prayers today. And so, Lord, we lift up all of this to you, trusting that you receive our prayers, that you hear them, that you use them, that you change us through them. Lord, this day, be with us as we go into this world. Help us to point to the good news of the coming of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, have a great weekend. 
Good to be with you this week. God bless you today, and we will see you soon.